and put my little cookie pillow in there. Oh, it looks so cute. Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Mar and I am your internet book bestie. Today I'm going to talk about all of the books I read in January 2024. Yay super excited. This month I actually had a pretty good reading month. Um, usually at the beginning of the year I fall into reading slumps. I have a really hard time picking up books and getting back into reading, but this month somehow I, um, I didn't really fall into a reading slump. I think I just started reading books that I just genuinely enjoyed reading and I had a pretty good like average rating system. So yeah, let's get into it. So the first book I read in January was Daisy Hates by Jessa Hastings and this book is the second book in the Magnolia Park series and I really enjoyed it. I gave it four stars and I think I just like the characters a lot more in this book because in the Magnolia Park series, it alternates between the characters Magnolia Parks and Daisy Hates. So the first book is about the character Magnolia Parks and she's in this very complicated relationship with this character named BJ Ballantyne and both of them are London socialites. They are both, they come from very rich and affluent families. Um, Magnolia Parks is dad is like a music producer or something and her mom's like a fashion designer or something like that and um i don't really know where bj's family comes from my that has left my brain but this one is about the other character named daisy hates so the books alternate between magnolia's book and then daisy hates book so this is daisy hates and it takes place roughly around the same time as the first book so that's why you need to read the books kind of like back to back pretty much daisy hates is about this also London socialite, but she comes from a family of gang lords, drug lords, weapons dealers, and all that. And she has an older brother named Julian Hates who has taken up the family business because their parents died um, when they were young. And so she's kind of stuck in that sort of world. She's in the sort of similar circles to Magnolia Parks. And there's also a point of view of the love interest, which is Christian Hems or Hemmes. He's He was also in the first book of Magnolia Parks. So that's sort of where the crossover happens. I just really like Daisy as a character compared to Magnolia. They're both very different characters. They're both very strong female characters, but at the same time, I think I just like Daisy because she's very sarcastic, she's very no-nonsense, she, she's very smart as well and like in her chapters there are like little subscripts like you know these subscripts you put in like research papers which I thought was a really cute detail and a fun touch. Just overall it's like these are very character driven novels. There's some plot to it for sure like there are situations the characters get into that really can't be avoided and you know cause like a lot of drama. So if you really like following characters that have a lot of drama and like causing a lot of drama, then I think this is the book series for you. A lot of the relationships that are in this book series as well, they're very toxic. Like going into it, you know that it's going to be toxic relationships, toxic romances, people who aren't necessarily fit for each other. And if you go into that knowing that, I think you'll have a better time reading it. But if you're looking for a romance book with like a lot of fluff, healthy relationships, you're not gonna get this. Like this really like tugs on your heartstrings. I think what keeps me reading these books is primarily just Jessa Hastings writing. I think she's a wonderful writer and everything she writes about, she describes everything in such like detail and there's a lot of introspective things like especially about love like there's so many quotes in here about just like love finding you know finding the right person love these books takes place in like first person so it's like the point of views are always like first person for each of the characters so like the characters will think these most profound things like these pr most like profound quotes about love but then choose to make the worst decisions possible so i think that's always kind of funny it's like they'll say the most beautiful thing about love and yet they'll still mess up their relationships this there's currently four books in the series right now and then a fifth is coming out this year i believe so um i'm super excited for that i just started reading the third book and i only read the first chapter so i haven't gotten far yet but 
Um, overall, I really like Daisy Hates, and I see why people like this series, but also I see why people don't like the series as well. I would suggest read the first Magnolia Parks, and if you don't like that, you'll probably, you probably won't like Daisy Hates. The next book I read was Wildfire by Hannah Grace, and this is the second book in the Maple Hill series. So the first book is Icebreaker, which many people know is like the viral hockey romance. I will be doing an icebreaker video, so. But yeah, personally, I like Wildfire way more than Icebreaker. I would say Icebreaker is more so of a hockey romance because like it emphasizes more that the main guy is a hockey player and it's something he really wants to do and takes place in like this college in California out of all places. It's not necessarily plot based, it's very character based. It's about these hockey players who are all trying to sort of find love at this college. The first book is about Nate and Anastasia and so it's like a hockey player figure skater romance. This one it takes place from the point of view of Russ. So Russ is also a hockey player on the same team as Nate at this, at this university or this college in California and pretty much in the first book Russ isn't necessarily like a major player like he's not he appears like sporadically throughout the first book but he does have a bit of a plot in the first book which sort of translates into this one but this book primarily takes place at a kid's summer camp so russ he um he gets a job as a camp counselor at this at this kid's summer camp in Maple Hills or near Maple Hills or something like that. And before this camp even starts, there's like an end of the year party where he meets the love interest, Aurora. So him and Aurora hook up at this party, but then she like leaves and then they just like haven't talked since until they see each other at this summer camp again. Hannah Grace writes a lot of fluffy romances. Like there's definitely like, smut and all of that in her books but I would say this one doesn't have as like as many unhinged smut scenes as Icebreaker because this one because it takes place at a kid's summer camp you know there's only like so many places where they can like really do anything without getting in trouble so in this book they actually like talk a lot because these characters actually know how to communicate with each other like it's not a frustrating read like if anything this is a pretty fast read like you can get through it and I just like liked it a lot better. I liked Russ as a character, I liked Aurora as a character, and I think they're like a really good couple together. And like personally, I just really enjoyed reading it. And so um yeah, the third book is coming out this summer, I think. Fluffy romance, there's golden retrievers in this and all of that. Like I would suggest like you pick up Wildfire or Icebreaker by Hannah Grace. Like it's a pretty they're pretty easy reads. Yeah, I think I rated this four stars, which is pretty high for me. Like, especially when it comes to romance books. That's Wildfire by Hannah Gray. So after that, I decided to pick up a fantasy novel and I decided to pick up The Wicked King by Holly Black. And this is the second book in the Elfheim series or the Cruel Prince series. So the first book is A Cruel Prince. This is the next book. Um, I did like a... I read The Cruel Prince last year and then I ended up doing a reread of it because I decided to annotate a copy for one of my friends for Christmas. So um, The Cruel Prince series was just like fresh in my mind so I was like okay I might as well pick up this book and read the next one. And this one I would, I really liked it. At first I did find it a bit slow because just like there's just a lot of political stuff happening and it just a lot of stuff wasn't happening and then all of a sudden it like picked up and I was like reading this like super quickly. I don't have an emotional attachment to the series but I do like just reading it to just get immersed into a different world especially with like a lot of fae and all that. The thing with like fae fantasies I've I've been reading so much of those types of novels that I like genuinely have to branch out more. Just like different fantasy books that don't have like fairies involved. I really like The Wicked King. I really like the end of it. I think Holly Black is just great at doing a cliffhanger, doing all these plot twists that you, like, you just don't see coming. I mean, I definitely see why people are like really emotionally attached to this book and like the characters in this book. For me, it's like, I like Jude. I like Cardan. I like a lot of the characters and I dislike a lot of the characters in these this books. This book series definitely has like characters that it's like you love to hate. And that's what I like about reading about this. Like 
it's like you really do like Jude as character, you like Car Cardin as a character, like they're all morally gray and they all make mistakes and they all are double crossing each other. So it's always a fun time reading this book. Um, I hope to get to the last book in the series, so The Queen of Nothing, um, probably next month because I just really don't have any reason to just not finish this book series and I think I'm sort of in a fantasy mood now. So yeah, that's what I have to say about The Wicked King. I don't have too many comments on this one. The next book I read, or this one I listened to on Audible, and it is The Stand-In by Lily Chu and it's narrated by Miss Philippa Sue. If you know Philippa Sue, she's from Hamilton. She played Miss Eliza Schuyler. And I... I rated this book a three stars, and if it wasn't narrated by Philippa Sue, I'd probably even rate it lower. Like, I did not like this book, and I'm not saying, like, it was a bad book or anything. Like, I think it was written fine, and I think the plot was fine. I just think the marketing was not good for it. Like, it was marketed as this, like, romance book. Yeah, it, like, dealt with heavier topics that I just wasn't really prepared to sort of, like, read about. The stand-in is about this girl named Gracie Reed and she has, you know, she's this mixed Chinese Canadian girl. She is hired by this Chinese actress who's filming a movie or doing a play or something in Toronto to be sort of her stand-in because they're pretty much doppelgangers of each other. She accepts a job to become the stand-in for, for Wei Fong Lee and she pretty much falls in love with like Wei Feng Li's like best friend, like best actor, best friend named Sam. Forget him. Like I don't even know his last name. I forget his last name already. He's doing this play with Wei Feng Li and all that. So he's sort of teaching Gracie like pretty much how to become Wei Feng Li. You know, it's a very much a Prince and the Pauper, Lizzie McGuire movie kind of situation, you know, where it's like you have this nobody who is now like pretending to be a, a somebody, right? And I thought it was just gonna be like this, you know, very like very rom com y, right? Like because that trope is very rom com y. It's very unserious. You expect kind of like all of these you know, unexpected shenanigans to happen. But no, this book t talks about like the mental health of artists and like just mental health, ex like in general, like sexual assault, sexual harassment in a workplace kind of thing. So like all of these different topics that I definitely think should have been disclosed, like before even like opening the book and reading the book. It's also on me for not doing that research, but it's just, it was marketed in such a way that it's like I just wasn't expecting to deal for it to deal with that like heavy like those types of heavy topics and if I knew that it was going to deal with it maybe I would have different thoughts about this book but I really just thought it was like a romance book and you know it was about this girl who becomes a somebody dates someone rich you know more of a romantic comedy type of book but it just wasn't like that in the case and so I think that's also why my rating is just slow I it's like a three stars but um at the same time i just don't remember the plot to it to be quite honest like i think that there were so many chapters that were just absolutely unnecessary and the pacing was just so long like it felt so long to listen to i listened to maybe for the first two hours i genuinely thought i was already halfway through the novel and it was just like nope you have 10 hours of this novel left and so yeah it's like i personally just did not really like this book i think the pacing was just also way too slow i've read um her other book the comeback which is about like a girl who has to live with like this korean pop star but she doesn't know he's a korean pop star like i read that one and that one was definitely a lot better that one the plot was actually going somewhere i like the characters in it as well so i think that's what made it tolerable but like the main girl in this book as well like gracie she was just so annoying to me like i was like okay i understand like she's a character that has a lot of flaws and i'm like i can get past that i can it's like i understand a character with flaws it's just she did she didn't do that much to like really do anything about it you know like, it's like she would make the same mistakes over and over again and she was just very like avoidant of conflict and you know things and so it was sort of just like it got to the point where she was making the same mistake over and over again it was genuinely making it hard for me to like the character and i was sort of just like you're getting everything that's coming your way at this point if like you're not going to change or anything if you keep making the same mistake over and over again like no wonder like 
you're facing all these consequences, right? So for me, it was just like, I was just getting so frustrated by the end of it that it's like, I probably would have DNF this book if I wasn't already like at the end of the book. So yeah, it's like now just talking about it, I'm just getting infuriated. So like, I'm just gonna stop talking about it. Otherwise I might be changing my three star rating again, but I just did not like the stand in. The next book I read was Twisted Love by Anna Huang. And I've been seeing videos about this book everywhere. You know, this is again, one of those TikTok viral books and a lot of people have opinions on this one. And so I got this for Christmas and I really wanted to see like what this whole book was about. Like I obviously knew the plot going into it cause I watched um, Lexi's video about Twisted Love, but I was like, I need to read this and, and make some opinions for myself. This this sort of falls into the category of like guilty pleasure books for me. I also like don't like that I like this book. You know, it's like if you like this book, if this is a full on pleasure for you, if you love the characters, if you love the writing, if you love everything about this book, good for you. This was the most crazy book I've read. Like obviously like I I know that there are crazier books out there, but it was just so funny reading this book because every time I turned the page, like more stuff, more unhinged things were was happening and I was so entertained. It was it was so fun to read. And I'm like not even joking about that. Like I genuinely had a fun time reading this book. What the main guy was doing was absolutely criminal. And it's like it's such a crazy book series, but I just I I ate it up. I was entertained. I was sat throughout this whole thing. Yeah, so Twisted Love is about this 22 year old girl named Ava Chen and she's this photographer and she's in her last year of university and pretty much a lot of traumatic things happened in Ava's life. So it resulted in her having like this really overprotective older brother. Her and her brother live beside each other and her brother has to move to like South America or something because he's he's like a doctor or something so he's volunteering and josh is a character that is going to appear later on in the series because he has his own book in the twisted series as well yeah i think it's south america josh is moving and so he since he's moving he needs someone to take care of his younger sister he asks his friend alex volkov to pretty much take care of ava and alex he's this really rich guy he's like he has billions or something i don't know like he's a really rich guy and like He's had this money since he was like really young because he was a genius and so like he ran this company with his uncle for a bit and so like that's why he's so rich and so like because he's so rich he kind of like has nothing but time like obviously he's married to his work but he's also has like nothing but time so he agrees to help Alex and so he moves into Alex's house which is right beside Ava's and like Alex is this very like brooding grumpy like he's been through a lot of shit in his life type of a vibe you know and so and meanwhile Ava is like this very like sunshine like sees the positive things but she's also had a traumatic past it's very like funny to read about <laughs> and like obviously it's like it's their love story like it's the grumpy sun sunshine trope it's their love story like just me explaining the main plot of this book is just like absolutely insane to me but overall, I personally had a fun time reading it. I mean, I know people have a lot of thoughts about this book series, but yeah, I just, I just, ha it was just really entertaining for me. Like, obviously it's not the most like well-written thing I've read or whatever. And like, it's, I'm definitely not going to get like a literary prize or anything, but if you just want to read like an unhinged romance novel, like this is it. Like, that's Twisted Love for you. The next book I read was um, The Lies We Tell by Katie Zhao. And that is like a young adult sort of mystery novel. And I just really wanted to read like a mystery type of novel. It's pretty much just about this girl named Anna Zhu. And she's a freshman in college. She's going to this college called Brookings University in New York. And she notices at this college that like some strange things are happening and she's also just trying to uncover the mystery of like what happened to her old babysitter because it turns out that her old babysitter went to this university and she ended up murdered and 
it was like this murder that hasn't been solved. So Anna's like, okay, if I'm here and I'm going to this university, I might as well try to uncover as much as I can about what happened to her. And at the same time, it's also in a way a little bit of a romance novel. It's sort of like academic rival. So she meets a guy at this frat party and it turns out that he's the son of the her dad's competition because her mom and dad run a bakery in New York and then across the street this new bakery opened and it turns out to be like her dad's like rival or whatever so it turns out that she meets at this frat party is the son of her dad's rival it's like this whole thing yeah I mean I rated this book three and a half stars um I thought it was like a pretty it was a pretty easy read I did think it was pretty predictable at times for it you know being a mystery and all that and I think it's mostly due to the fact that there just weren't a lot of characters so the, obviously it's like the more characters you have in a mystery novel the more the easier it kind of is to lead people astray where it's like this book there weren't too many characters so it was kind of like you had an inkling to like sort of who done it. other than that it's sort of like if you really like if you've read the book like Ace of Spades or you really like A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, I think you would enjoy this book. It's a pretty short book. I was pretty entertained reading it. That's all I really have to say about that one. So the next books I read were the Burn for Burn trilogy by Jenny Han and Siobhan Vivian. And if you have looked on my channel, I've been doing a whole recap video for the series. I've been doing recap videos for each book in the series. So I posted the first two and I'm on my way to post the third one. It's going up really soon. This is the Burn for Burn trilogy by Jenny Han and Siobhan Vivian and I just don't think people talk about the series enough. Um, the whole premise of the series is that it's about these three girls who come together after a series of events and they take they make this pact to do revenge on all of the people that did them who wronged them or did them wrong. It's a really fun book series and if you like Jenny Han's writing um, or Jenny Han's book series, I think you would like this book series a lot. The, there's not a whole lot of focus on romance. Well, in Ashes to Ashes, there's probably the most romance out of all of it. It's a bit more plot based than her other book series and it's just a really fun read. Like it's really fast, it's really fun read. It deals with friendships, it deals with revenge, and so if you kind of like those tropes or those plots, then I highly suggest you read this series. The next thing I read or listen to. I listened to the audiobook Butcher and Blackbird by Bryn Weaver on Audible and the actual like audiobook is so good. It's so good. Like the voice actors are amazing and I don't say that a lot when it comes to audiobooks but no they have both a male narrator and a female narrator because this book is dual point of view. They don't do the thing that most audiobooks do where it's like if it's from the guy's point of view. The male actor will read pretty much everything in the chapter and he also does the female voices. That doesn't happen in this book series. He only does the male voices and the female actor does all of the female voices. It's like you don't have to hear the male guy do like a high-pitched voice for the female. And like that's one of my pet peeves when it comes to listening to audiobooks. It's like I do not like it when like the males do the female voices and the females do the male voices. Like I just can't do it. So that's why I like the graphic audio version of the Akatar audiobook series from Graphic Audio. So good. The audiobook for Butcher and Blackbird was really good. Um as for the story, it's pretty much his romance about these two serial k-worders. There's a lot of, you know, banter between them and they pretty much over the years start to get to know each other. They kind of do these yearly trips where they're hunting for, usually they're hunting to k-word a person, um, usually another serial killer, but like they're serial k-worders with like morals kind of thing. I think the audiobook saves the actual like book like if I think I think if I actually like read the book um like just without the audiobook I don't think I would have liked it as much I rated this 3.5 stars um because it just jumps around a lot it starts there and then it like jumps a year it jumps a couple months and then it's sort of like it's really easy to get lost especially if you're listening to it like I listened to it and then I had to like bring out the actual like book with me because I had to like I just genuinely didn't know where we were in the plot. I think it was really entertaining listening to audiobook but as for story wise like it did fall a bit flat in some places. Personally it just wasn't for me and I think like it is 
a bit darker and it deals with like darker topics. Overall, like I like listening to the audiobook, so like I like the actors, so I'll give it that. And I think that's what saved the book for me. And the last book I read this month is Crescent City, House of Flame and Shadow. And you're probably like, what do you mean you read it in January? I read it. I did not stop reading it. I spent the entire January 30th reading this book and I finished it at like 2 a.m. the next day. So, or like the day I'm filming this, I filmed, I finished it at like 2 a.m. this morning. And I just like, I ate this book up. I gave it 4.5 stars. It just, it didn't hit the five star mark for me, um, which is okay, which is okay. But I personally really like this book. I have a whole video of my review on this book and all that. So if you want to know my thoughts about it with like spoilers and all that, go check that video out. Overall, like I think it ties up the Crescent City series like really well. And I loved Hunt and Bryce's relationship in this book. I did think that some of the secondary characters, like the B plots, kind of fell short in this book. But that was mostly because like the main plot took up so much time that like we had places to be and things to do that it's like I'm okay I'm willing to overlook it but I definitely don't think this is the end of the Crescent City series like I definitely think Sarah J Mass has more planned and all of that but overall I had a really fun time reading it I really love the characters I know some people have mixed reviews on this book um some people really liked it some people didn't and personally for me I really liked it I thought it was a great sort of wrap up to the series Some criticism so obviously like if you want to check those out go watch my other video but yeah it's like I ate this book up it's super thick it's 800 pages long and I just like did not put it down I was reading it like I don't know I just like fell in love with the characters even more I fell in love with the world even more and it's like I think that's what Sarah J Mass is so good at it's like once you get sucked into her world it's kind of hard to like get out of it and so yeah I really wasn't expecting to read this so fast either but I just like I couldn't put it down I just sat there and read and read and read for hours and then I realized I was like oh I finished the book um I didn't mean to do that in such a short amount of time but yeah that's what happens want to see my thoughts if you want to see me reading it go check out my other video but yeah this was the last book i read this month yeah, so that is what i read in january and if you've read any of these books or anything i would love to hear your thoughts about them in the comments yeah i'm not really sure what books i'm going to be i actually know i know what books i'm going to be reading in february but i can't say because i don't want to i don't want to spoil any future videos so yeah it's like thanks for watching this video if you liked it subscribe or whatever um, my social links are down below and yeah thanks for watching and i'll see you guys in my next video bye